I'm honestly relieved that there is a large study examining if the vaccine could generate neurological side effects. This way, we are not in the dark. We can know how many people are affected and start figuring out what can be done about it. You see, when there are cases of someone developing a disorder after a vaccine shot, it is not that easy to confirm whether the vaccine caused it. This is because people develop disorders all the time, and some will be diagnosed right after getting vaccinated. But that doesn't mean the vaccine caused the disease. Now, suppose there were more cases than usual of a disorder happening right after people get the vaccine. Then there would be an argument that vaccines generate some of those cases. And that's what a study looking at 32 million people found. In this study, they looked if there was an increase in the occurrence of neurological disorders in the month right after getting the first vaccine dose. From the neurological disorders examined, scientists found that the AstraZeneca vaccine increases the risk of Guillain-Barré syndrome, or GBS, Bell's palsy, and myasthenic disorders, and the Pfizer vaccine increases the risk of hemorrhagic strokes. So, what are these disorders? And how could the vaccine cause them? The study estimated 38 GBS extra cases for every 10 million people after the AstraZeneca vaccine. GBS is an autoimmune disorder in which your immune cells start attacking your peripheral nervous system. That is, all the nerves in your body except for the spinal cord and the brain. The symptoms are a tingling feeling in the legs, feet, and toe. And then this feeling can spread upwards, sometimes really fast. Your leg muscles will also start feeling weak, and it may get harder to chew, talk, or swallow food. And patients with GBS were also diagnosed with Bell's palsy, which creates facial weakness. However, scientists think that clinically speaking, this Bell's palsy diagnosis might be just a new variant of GBS. Basically, the muscles are difficult to control because the nerves we use to activate these muscles are damaged. So why would this happen after getting the AstraZeneca vaccine? We're getting technical now. When we get vaccinated, the shot will produce a part of the virus called the spike protein. Our immune system creates antibodies that can attach to this spike protein and tag it for immune cells to recognize and destroy it. The problem is that parts of the spike protein have a structure similar to lipids in our nerves. This is known as molecular mimicry. And because they are so similar, antibodies misidentify these lipids as invaders and signal the immune cells to attack them. This damages our nerves and that is why we cannot signal our muscles to move correctly. You could think of it as going paintball. And then, you shoot one of your own teammates because they are wearing a suit similar to the opposite team. Why would you wear that same suit, Timmy? A similar mechanism is thought to happen in myasthenia, another autoimmune disorder producing muscle weakness. In myasthenia, immune cells attack proteins in a neuromuscular junction which are similar to parts of the spike protein. The study also mentioned a trend towards increased risk of encephalitis, meningitis, and myelitis after vaccination, but it was not statistically significant. For those receiving the Pfizer vaccine, 60 extra cases of hemorrhagic stroke for every 10 million people were estimated. A hemorrhagic stroke is when a vessel in the brain breaks and bleeds into the surrounding tissue damaging the brain. Symptoms can range from severe headaches to weakness of the face and seizures. There can be many symptoms, depending on the damaged brain regions. So why is this happening? There are reports that mRNA vaccines may increase the risk of thrombocytopenia, an autoimmune disorder that is characterized by a low number of platelets in the blood. Guess what is the main function of platelets? Blood clotting. And Pfizer is an mRNA vaccine. So, a possible explanation is that if a vein breaks, people that develop thrombocytopenia cannot blood clot and stop the bleeding. Currently, there are no large-scale studies linking the Pfizer vaccine with thrombocytopenia or blood clots, so more research is needed to verify why these hemorrhagic strokes occur. And finally, another study found the AstraZeneca vaccine could cause blood clots in channels that help us drain blood from the brain. 
These channels are known as venous sinuses, and there are 2.5 events per 100,000 vaccinations of blood clots found in these channels. Blood clots may occur in other body parts, so you might hear the term vaccine-induced thrombotic thrombocytopenia, or VITT, to refer to these types of disorders. Unfortunately, VITT can be deadly. And in a study following patients with these disorders, 23% of them died because of it. But let's be clear that this is happening to a very small number of patients that actually develop the syndrome. For comparison, more than one-fifth of COVID-19 patients in the ICU have blood clots. That's a huge difference. Now, why is this happening? Why do some patients get blood clots? One proposed mechanism is that the vaccine could be injected into the blood vessels by mistake. AstraZeneca uses an adenoviral vaccine. This type of vaccine can activate platelets and initiate blood clotting if injected into the bloodstream. Another possible explanation is that the spike protein in adenoviral vaccines can be spliced, creating different spike protein variants. Some of these variants can get into the blood causing inflammation and blood clots similar to those seen in SARS-CoV-2 infections. And another explanation involves the adenoviral vaccine interacting with a protein in our body called PF4. Our immune system thinks PF4 is an invader and creates antibodies against it. But instead of simply destroying PF4, what happens is that it ends up clumping the PF4 with platelets activating them and forming blood clots. So should you still vaccinate? Yes, it is still highly recommended to vaccinate. If you get infected by COVID instead, the chances of getting these neurological disorders and many more are way higher. For example, as we explained earlier, more than one out of five COVID-19 patients in the ICU develop blood clots. That's way more than a pair of cases in the hundreds of thousands or even millions of people getting a neurological disorder from a vaccine. That's pretty much it. See you in the next video.